Now coming to the mechanics of respiration. Mechanics of respiration is very very important because there, there are several pressures which are happening in the lung. There are several pressures which are involved in the lung which is going to away as in MCQs and they are involved in some clinical pathological things also. So coming to the mechanism of respiration, a respiration is a two process. One is the inspiration process, another one is expiration process. Inspiration is an active process. What do you mean by active? Active means it requires energy. Whenever anything requires energy, it means that it is active. And coming to the expiration part, the lung has expanded during inspiration and it is going to contract during expiration. So this expiration happens passively. It does not need any energy. It is just the recoil of the lung is causing the expiration. And what are the muscles involved in inspiration? That is the diaphragm, external intercostal muscles. Here inspiration is caused by external intercostal muscles. Don't think inspiration for internal intercostal. It is wrong. Inspiration is caused by external intercostal muscles. Then comes the sternocleidomastoid and the scalene group of muscles. Now coming to the expiration process, the expiration is usually passive, but if it becomes active, suppose a person is fast breathing. So during that time, it will take help of the abdominal muscles as well as the internal intercostal muscles. Expiration is for internal intercostal muscles. So this is the process of respiration. Then what are the pressures in the lung that is involved in creating the expansion and contraction like inspiration and expiration. Coming to the pressures in the lung. Before going to the pressures in the lung, all of us should understand one law that is Boyle's law. What Boyle's law states is the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So how to understand it in a simple term? For example, let's take a bowl of water like here. And we start compressing with a piston. Like a piston, we are starting to compress it here. Now you guys tell me what has happened to the volume? The volume has reduced. Here what has happened to the volume? The volume has decreased. But now the molecules of water are in a compressed state. So what is happening to the pressure? The pressure will be increased. So the pressure is increased. So whenever the volume is decreased, what is happening to the pressure? It is increased. The same reverse will happen. Whenever the pressure is decreasing, what will happen to the volume? It is going to increase. That is what happens in the lung epithelium also. So I hope it's clear. Now going into the representative image, before going into the discussion of pressures, all of you should understand this simple diagram wherein the central portion that is the alveoli is represented. The central portion is alveoli which is represented here. This portion is the alveoli. Alveoli means it is representing the entire lung. Let's take it as a sample of the entire lung. Then immediately next to the alveoli, what is the covering we have? That covering is called pleura. And if it is covering the viscera, it is called as visceral pleura. Here the lung, it is the lung pleura. It is covering the lung. So it is called as visceral pleura. And next to the visceral pleura, what do we have? We have the parietal pleura. In between do these two pleural spaces, what do we have? The, we have the pleural space or pleural fluid is there. Okay. Then finally, the green one which is represented here is the chest cavity. Covering this, all these things is the chest cavity. Now we are going to discuss the various pressures in the lung. So first coming to the intrapleural pressure. Intrapleural pressure means the pressure inside between these two pleura. The pressure between the parietal and visceral pleura is called as intrapleural pressure. Here we can see that that is the intrapleural pressure. So how this intrapleural pressure is generated? Let's try to understand it first. So what is the property of a lung? The property of the lung is to collapse. That the alveoli are trying to collapse. It is an inward force. So the lung's property is to collapse inward. But what is the property of the chest wall? The chest wall's property, whenever I try to take out the chest wall and keep it outside, it is going to expand out. So the property of chest wall is to expand, whereas the lung is to collapse. So these two forces are opposing each other. So let's see with this example. There is an inward movement of the lung and there is an outward movement of the chest wall. So what is happening to the volume? I am stretching two sides with the pleura. One side I am stretching with the lung. The other side I am pulling out with the chest wall. So what is happening to this volume? The volume is increasing. So here the volume 
is increasing volume is increasing i told you whenever the volume increases what happens to the pressure the according to our boyle's law which we understood the pressure is going to drop pressure is going to drop so the intra pleural pressure it is generated by opposing forces of the lung and the chest wall lung and chest wall they are moving out in different directions so that's why intra pleural pressure is created but someone has to maintain it it is maintained by the lymphatic system the lymphatic system are constantly draining this pleura and it is creating a suction pressure the lymphatics are creating a suction pressure so that's why this pressure is always in a downward direction that is negative just remember the intra pleural pressure is always negative why because it is having the volume increase and there is a pressure drop below the atmospheric level it is always negative and coming to the first graph here you can see here here there is an inspiratory part written on the x axis and there is an expiratory part and the pressures are written along the y axis this is nothing but the graph of an intra pleural pressure now we are going to draw it ourselves now the intra pleural pressure at the beginning even at the rest what i said it is always negative even at rest it is under minus 2.5 mm of hg that is the rest then what happens during inspiration whenever the person is inspiring what is happening going to happen the lung is going to expand the pleural fluid it is going to expand the pleural phase is going to expand so what will happen to the volume the volume is going to further increase and there is going to be a huge pressure drop so even from the 2.5 it is going to drop down to minus 6 and during expiration the reverse happens and it comes back to again minus 2.5 see at any point of time wherever you take at any point of time it is always negative so the inspiration ends here which is at the maximum at inspiration it is maximally negative that is around minus 6 mm of hg and during expiration it is going back to the levels of minus 2.5 again now coming to the other pressures intra alveolar pressure intra alveolar pressure means it is the pressure which is inside the alveoli it is also called as intra pulmonary pressure intra pulmonary pressure so what is the pressure inside the alveoli at rest the alveoli is connected to the external atmosphere so whatever pressure is there in the atmosphere that is going to be there in the alveoli at rest so the pressure in the atmosphere is 760 mm of hg so what is the pressure in the alveoli it is again 760 mm of hg since both are neutral this pressure is referred as zero mm of hg zero means don't think it is zero it is equilibrated with the atmosphere now think yourself what is going to happen when we are starting to inspire my alveoli is going to expand so there will be a pressure drop then the air starts to fill in first we are expanding the alveoli let's see now we are expanded the alveoli there will be a pressure drop and the alveoli is air is going to be filled now whenever air is getting filled the pressure is going to neutralize again then when i expire what is going to happen the alveoli is trying to collapse it and send the air out so there will be a pressure increase and when the air is moved out then again it is going to neutralize the normal values so at rest what is our pressure at rest we have the pressure of 0 mm of hg so from 0 this is the inspiratory part this is the expiration part we are going to draw it ourselves again and here we have represented the intra alveolar pressure in mm of hg at rest where where should we start at zero level so this is our at rest level so what is going to happen whenever i start inspiring the pressure is going to drop down then when the air is getting filled it is going to neutralize again in a similar manner during expiration it can move to positive and again it is going to come down to zero so this will be the classical curve of intra alveolar pressure in intra alveolar pressure now tell me at what point it is very very minimal or least intra alveolar pressure it is at minus 1 let's see where it is happening it is happening during mid inspiration so the intra alveolar pressure it is minimal that is the least during mid inspiration then where it is maximum it is simple it is in the expiratory phase and it is in the mid expiratory phase so it is maximum at 
mid expiratory phase so coming to the transmural pressure this is the third group of pressure first we saw the intrapleural pressure then we saw the intraalveolar pressure now we are going to discuss about the transmural pressure first of all tell me what is trans trans means it is across so till now what we are seeing till now we were seeing inside the alveolar pressure inside the pleural pressure but now what we are going to do we are going to see it across some spaces so what is this trans means this trans means nothing but across so in this transmural pressure we have three things one is the transpulmonary pressure then transthoracic pressure and transrespiratory pressure all this terms seems to be confusing but don't worry it is very simple transpulmonary pressure so whenever there is some pressure across the pulmonary system that is lung is there inside some pressure is there outside some pressure is there so when i compare these two pressures it is called as transpulmonary pressure so uh, this is our alveoli or the lung which i said what is the pressure inside the alveoli it is called as intraalveolar pressure just now we saw what is the pressure outside the lung it is intrapleural pressure so when we try to find the difference between them it is called as transpulmonary pressure so what is the normal intraalveolar pressure it is nothing but zero what is the normal intrapleural pressure it is nothing but minus 2.5 so zero minus of minus 2.5 which is plus 2.5 mm of hg this is the transpulmonary pressure and most of the curves like the compliance curves that we are going to see happens with the help of transpulmonary pressures they they put the transpulmonary pressure in the x axis and compare the expansions of the lung then coming to the transthoracic pressure so it is the pressure between the thorax so what is outside the thorax outside the thorax we have the atmosphere so outside the thorax we have the atmospheric pressure inside the thorax what we have we have the intrapleural pressure so when we take the difference between intrapleural pressure and the atmospheric pressure it is called as transthoracic pressure it is across the thorax that's why it is called transthoracic pressure so it is minus 2.5 minus 0 which is minus 2.5 mm of hg now coming to the third trans pressure which is the trans respiratory pressure respiratory system means it includes both the lung as well as the chest wall when we see the pressure difference across both the lung and the chest wall it gives us the trans respiratory pressure what is the innermost pressure innermost pressure is the intra alveolar pressure what is the outermost pressure the outermost pressure is at so why are we discussing all this pressures we are discussing all this pressures because of the pneumothorax there are several conditions whenever fluid is getting accumulated in the pleural space it is called as pleural effusion whenever air is getting accumulated in the pleural space it is called as pneumothorax in pneumothorax also one severest form of condition is there which is called as tension pneumothorax what is this tension pneumothorax tension means it is huge amount of positive pressure this kind of pneumothorax is very very dangerous for the subject and it is a medical emergency so what happens here is there is a breach in the pleural space there is a breach in the pulmonary system and there is a breach in the pleural space and the air is entering from the alveoli into the pleural space and whenever we are doing expiration this valve is getting closed now during expiration this valve is getting closed so what will happen during inspiration air is going into the pleural space so pressure is going to increase then expiration it is getting closed then again during the next inspiration more pressure will go so the pressure keeps on increasing in the pleural space because of the air entry whenever it is keeping on entering into the airway what will happen it is going to compress the entire lung when it is compressing the entire lung what is the difficulty it is going to cause sudden collapse of the lung this sudden collapse of the lung is a medical emergency and the immediate treatment is to do a puncture in the second intercostal space whenever we see a such a patient like this our immediate action should be you should take a white bore needle and puncture it immediately in the second intercostal space on the right side preferably using a white bore needle because this air has to be released immediately otherwise my entire lung will go in for a collapse final treatment will be a thoracostomy tube we have to put the icd tube to drain out the air that is the final treatment but immediate treatment is the insertion of second intercostal space white bore needle 